There are countless entrepreneurs who came to America with nothing and through hard work and perseverance, built businesses that changed the world. Guido Kowalski is one of those bold immigrant entrepreneurs. Raised in Buenos Aires, Argentina, his mother was Sicilian and his father was born to Lithuanian and Polish parents. In Argentina, pretty much every family when I grew up um, had been there for less than one or two generations. As I got into university, I think uh, looking at my dad, who was an entrepreneur himself, uh, his first job, not even after college, when he was in college, was being a kind of an accounting clerk for a school. And he ended up, you know, 10 years later um, owning that school. So, you know, I would look at other dads and see that they would, you know, go for a job at 8 a.m. and come back at 6 p.m. and have a very clear structure on their, their salaries and, you know, their vacations. My dad was never like that. Um, more stressed than other dads because he, uh, he was responsible for, you know, a couple hundred kids that went to his school every day. And, you know, I think those are the memories I have from, from him. And, you know, they definitely, uh, they definitely influenced me going forward. In 1996, he came to California to attend business school at UC Berkeley. I mean, being an entrepreneur, normally in, in my country growing up, would be owning a small business, maybe a, a shop, like some, something along the more traditional lines. So this idea of, of, you know, entrepreneurial ventures in technology completely seduced me from day one. And I was in Berkeley in the middle of it. When the iPad came in, uh, I connected the dots and I said, you know, once every student had a device in their hands, the overall concept of what instruction means was going to change and I wanted to be part of that. Nearpod is a platform that helps teachers do instruction much better using the mobile technologies that are readily available by everyone and every school and every student. We started this company initially in Miami where my co-founder um, and myself were living. We were able to build a good product teachers would love, but also a good business that could become sustainable um, in a space that very few people believed that was possible. So we ended up overcoming those initial challenges. Securing funding in Silicon Valley proved much harder than launching with a bang. We ended up self-funding the first couple of years of, of, the, of the company uh, from our own pockets, from things we had done before. And then when it was almost very, very obvious, we were able to start attracting investors. And when I mean obvious is we were already at, you know, $2 million in annual recurring revenues. We were a real company creating real revenues. By 2016, Nearpod had more than 10,000 schools and 3.5 million students using the platform each month. The company raised an additional $10 million from investors, including Salesforce founder Mark Benioff and Intuit co-founder Scott Cook. Through it all, Nearpod has maintained its outsider roots. I think in general, immigrants, um, you're, you're in a place which is not entirely, you know, comfortable to you. You don't have your whole, you know, social system around you. You don't have your family surrounding you. You're just more, more careful in a way. and. Uh, because you got a lot to lose, but at, at the same time, you got a lot to win. You want to have the confidence that you need to be successful in a very challenging environment. But at the same time, you, you want to be a little bit paranoid because you don't know where kind of the bullets are going to come from. Uh, I think that combination of being paranoid and, and at the same time overconfident uh, is something that it's really, really important in the Valley in general. So, so I think, yeah, that, that attitude in general has been very helpful.